Hi there, Lori Williams here. Today I want to um, show you how you can make your own alcohol ink art journal. Now, if you watch mixed media videos, you'll know that mixed media journaling or art journaling is sort of a big thing. The issue with doing an art journal in alcohol ink is that most of the papers that the art journals are created with are um, very porous. They're like mixed media paper or watercolor paper, but they are not made for alcohol inks or for painting for alcohol inks. I thought it would be fun if we would make our own alcohol ink art journals. Now you can use a number of different papers. I am going to demonstrate using um, the back of the uh, Kirkland photo paper. So the back side of the Kirkland photo paper does really well with the alcohol inks and if you've worked with it you know what I'm talking about. However, the gloss side that is supposed to absorb the ink when you print on it um, does not do well with alcohol ink. So we're, we're sort of um, have to deal with that page and there's a couple of things you can do. When we're making the journal you could just use half the journal, leave half the journal um, with the glossy side that maybe you can do mixed media or something like that on or I came up with this way of having it, the journal created so that all the pages are the um, non-porous side and that's what I'm going to demonstrate for you here. So to get started I'm taking we're going to make a, a 10, a 10 or actually a 20 page journal which will take I think four, five sheets, five sheets of the, um, of the paper. So we're going to start with five sheets. Each one of these you're going to need to um, fold. And we want to fold them with the glossy side out. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to fold them with the glossy side out. And I just take them and I match up the edge here and just crease the edge, the, the end. And you can actually take it, uh, I have this big brush here and I can just take it and go around the edges to give myself a decent crease right there. And now I'm going to go and do the next one. Glossy side out. There we go. So, here I am with five sheets together for my art journal. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of these and one by one I'm going to attach the two glossy to glossy sides together so that when I flip my page it's all the non-porous side. So are you following what I'm going to do? We're going to we're going to attach all of these glossy sides together. We'll end up having all porous sides. Now again, that's an optional step. If you don't mind working with some of your pages glossy, then you could go ahead and then every other page you would have is glossy, you could work with other mixed mediums on that or you can gesso it and you if you gesso it, you can work with alcohol and top of the gesso and then you have these pages so that's one way that's the lazy way or like I said you could attach those pages so I want to see how many pages this is going to give us if I if we put it together that's one two three four five six <clears throat> seven eight nine ten so this would make a ten page journal I'm just kind of squishing these edges together to make it tight. Now, a lot of journals have a lot more pages than 10, but for the purposes of this presentation, we're going to create a 10-page journal. 
And I'm just going to press all this down. And then we'll start the next step, which is to um, attach these pages together. So the first thing that we want to do is take two of our sheets and we're going to very carefully attach these together. And to do this, you could glue them together, but what I think works better for this is to use double-sided tape. And so what you want to do is take the double-sided tape and run it along the edge of the bottom side here where the fold is, and then take your scissors and trim that off before the edge. So the thing that I want to tell you about working with the glossy side of this photo paper is that it's very, it's very easy for it to bond to other elements. So as soon as you touch the two together, you're committed. So you have to be very, very careful um, with making sure the edges meet up when we get them together. So I'm gonna nail paste one here at the top. And that should be enough. Um, when we when we create these, there will there will end up being a pocket at the top. If you wanted to, you could close that up if you want with with the uh, tape. But I'm going to leave it open because we might decide we want to stick things in and out, and it, can, it makes the book kind of its own pocket. Or you can maybe use that creatively in some way. So I'm just going to remove this double this um, paper from the double sided tape. And then I'm going to take my next one and very, 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 very carefully, I'm going to line it up, very carefully attach it to the piece below, give it a light press, and then open it up. And it should just match up at the top. So I'm just going to use my hands to spread that out and match the two together. So now we have two pages that flip. And we're going to continue doing this for all the rest of the pages until we have one complete book. As I mentioned before, the double-sided sticky tape really is the best solution. You could, like I said, you could use glue. You could use, um, you could even use a glue stick. That might work. Um, but I think the double-sided sticky tape is the cleanest and um, most precise solution with the least amount of mess. Um, again, you can just use your uh, creative license to do what you want here, uh, but this process works really good for gluing together pages. And some of the pages might end up being a little uneven, and I'm going to show you what I do with that at the end. So here we go. We don't have like a perfect edge on all of these, but we have a pretty decent journal that's all non-porous sided pages there we go so here you can if you look closely you can see right here on the edge where i got off i could come back and i think i'm going to and trim that so i'm just going to take my exacto blade you take scissors too but i'm just going to trim that edge off so that i don't have that glossy edge sticking up and my journal looks a little more finished you may or may not have to do this step. Hopefully, if you're careful, you won't. But if you do, it's not a big deal. Okay. So this is going to make the inside of, of, the, of the journal. You just have to remember where your beginning and your end is. Because <laughs> now I have this little thing going on here, which is kind of cool, but... <clears throat> Not what I envisioned, so let's find my edge here. There we go, and it'll be the one that has all the spines on it. Lay that down, and now we can move on to our next step. So before I proceed to the next step, um, you probably realize that this could be a lot of work. I mean, it's a nice project, and it's fun and therapeutic, but if you're like me, you want to jump right into the creating and starting your journal, and so... Um, I'm happy to introduce the Alcohol Ink Art Journal. I teamed up with Nara Paper and um, to come up with a solution for us alcohol ink artists who want to journal. And it includes the Nara Synthetic Paper, which is a wonderful substrate for alcohol ink. 
it um, will the the big beauty of it is is that you can lift all the way to white so you can create a lot of different depth and value using the paper so I thought it was a good solution and um, so we put together this art journal so hopefully you can check it out it's going to be available on our website at the alcohol ink art community um, it's https alcohol ink dot community so if you'd like one of these journals we only have a limited supply so put your order in as soon as possible and we will get that out to you as soon as possible thanks and now let's move back into our journal making okay so we have our book done and on this step you could just leave the book like it is um, and you need to decorate the cover and get to work on your journaling without doing anything further um, you could um, add you know a collage on the outside it is glossy so you definitely want to do something on the outside I, would, I wouldn't prefer to alco actually alcohol ink on the glossy it's going to sink in but one thing you could do is also maybe tie a ribbon here around the outside and a pretty bow and then that would look nice um, but for some of us that's not good enough and we need to take it a little step further and so that's what I'm going to show you now and I'm going to use a cereal box um, to do this and I'm going to create a nice hard rigid cover using the cereal box So I'm going to start off and trim off all the edges um, on my cereal box, the top edges at the, at the crease. They have a natural crease and you just take that and trim it and remove it. And uh, then we're going to take the journal and kind of measure it out. So you want the cover to be just a little bit larger than the actual cover. And I'm working along the spine so I can actually use that as well uh, without having to create too many um, hinged uh, Side. So you'll see. So I'm going to take my pen and just mark along along uh, the edges here just so I know where to trim it. And I'm just using a, a Pigma Micron marker for this. Anything that will do. You can use a Sharpie, um, any pen, crayon, pencil, whatever. And then mark where the top edges are. And then I'm going to then I'm going to turn it and use this crease here um, for the spine. It's it just seems like a natural thing to do, and I'm going to hold up this so I can kind of measure the thickness that I need. A little bit tricky, but that's what I'm going to do. Let's see if I can get it on camera how I do that. Okay, there we go. I just mark my edges there and then I can just take a straight edge and um, trim it. There we go. Just use a little box here for the straight edge. And mark that. Okay, so I now know where I need to do my trimming. And so I'm gonna take my X-Acto blade and I'm going to start on this left hand side and trim down the edge. And I'm having to take two, if you have a sharper blade it'll work a little better than what I'm using here. A blade has been used quite a bit and it's still, I need to replace that. When cutting through the board um, with an X-Acto blade, um, I'm just using a light pressure, but you do need to give it some pressure to cut all the way through. But I'm having to be careful here because I need to use the back side of my box. And um, so I'm applying just enough pressure to go through the front side, but not all the way through to the back side. Okay, so I'm going to bend this just a quick check here to see that my journal is going to fit within the spine and the cover that I've created. So the next step will be to create another one just like it using the back side of my cereal box. So I flip it over and trim off the tops again right at the fold. 
And since I already have the other piece measured out, all I need to do is use that as a template. And then I can just uh, put it right on that fold again, mark, mark it. And then just start cutting like I did the other side. Again, applying light, just enough pressure so that it cuts through. And I do have a board underneath. Uh, you can't really tell that here, but I have a board underneath so I don't go through to my table. Next, after both pieces are cut out, I'm going to um, bind them together. Again, I'm using double-sided sticky tape. This one is a little bit narrow, more narrow than the other one, but you can make, uh, if you only have one size, you can make it work. I just happen to have a thinner slice, so I used it. So I place it down on one side, and then I just remove the backing. <clears throat> and I'm actually going to put another piece, because I didn't have 100% coverage there, and I want to make sure that I have the absolute edge covered where I want the two um, the two panels to merge together. Okay, now finally I am going to merge the two pieces together to create the cover for my art journal. And there you have it. You can see that um, the outside edges are a little rough. I'm going to actually do a little cleaning on that and just clean things up a little bit. Um, but overall, I'm happy. Okay, um, now I'm just going to do a quick check, make sure everything fits good. Looks great. Um, I think this is going to work fine. So now I'm ready to attach the inside of my journal to the cover that I just made. Now I'm ready to move forward with decorating my journal and I'm actually going to use recycled paper towels from my drippings for this, um, but first I need to go through the process and cover it with gesso so that this bright purple and stuff doesn't shine through so much and whatever I put on top um, will lay down a little bit better. So I'm just spreading a little gesso here. Um, I'm using an old credit card that obviously has is warped a little bit so then I come back in with my sponge so I get a little bit smoother finish it's still leaving strength streaks but I'm just gonna go with it okay the gesso's dried and now I'm going to bring in um, some of my paper towels these are recycled paper towels that I have used on previous projects and I am actually going to attach them to the outside I'm going to leave the inside blank for now and I'm just going to take a few minutes here and play around with the placement until I'm happy. Then once I'm satisfied with sort of the way they look, notice I'm matching up sort of some of the, the colors so it looks a little more seamless. And I'm also covering up the spine. Um, and once I have this and I'm happy with it, then I'm going to move on to the next step, which will be um, adhering it to the surface. To glue the paper towels down, I'm going to be using Liquitex Matte Medium. And what I do is put a little bit into a container um, so that I have just a little bit to work with. It doesn't take a whole lot, um, but I find it's better than just pouring it on and spreading it. That way I can control the amount that is on the um, surface. You can also use Mod Podge for this. Um, it works fine as well. And I start out using a flat acrylic brush and I, it, I made sure it's really soft because sometimes some of the brushes can be hard and they leave streaks and this I find that the sulfur brushes work better. But I start applying it here to uh, the surface. The main point here is that we need to make sure that the front cover is completely covered before we try to uh, adhere our paper towel. So I'm going up and down. Um, sometimes I'll go side to side too just to make sure I have the best coverage but the main thing is just to make sure everything here is covered and when I'm done I set my paintbrush aside 
and I pick up my paper towel and just place it on the top. In this portion, I'm making sure the spine is covered. And I use my finger to press it into place. And this might take a little bit of repositioning and in some areas I might notice that I need a little bit more of my matte medium. So then I'll take my hand and spread it out just to make sure that the paper towel is completely attached and that there's no air pockets inside. Also notice that I'm leaving an overhang and that's on purpose. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with that next. And after that is in place, I'm gonna start it on the next side here, which will end up being the back side of my journal and continue on. I am putting the um, matte medium down, making sure that the entire piece is covered just as we did before. Then I come in and place the second piece of paper towel down. So if you notice here, uh, this is not how I had planned to match it up. And the reason I ended up doing it this way, and it doesn't really matter that much in this case, but I wanted the texture to be the same on both sides. And when I flipped it, the texture wasn't the same. So um, I made the sacrifice of this matching the seams for making sure that the texture was consistent on the front and back. Now I come in with more of my matte medium. Again, you could use Mod Podge here and go over the top to seal. So this is raw alcohol ink, so it's exposed and it hasn't been sealed at all. So I wanna just give it a quick seal on the outside. I could just take um, Kmart varnish and spray that, that would also work here. Um, but since I had the matte medium out, I figured I'd go ahead and uh, just finish it off with this. Okay, so I'm just going to trim a little bit off the edge and um, then I'm going to wrap the corners around uh, so they, it has a nice finished edge. So I'm trimming probably everything but about three quarters of an inch off of the edge here. Now I'm attaching some of my double-sided sticky tape. This has been my friend for this project. So now I'm going to wrap around the edges of the paper towel and I'm putting down a little bit of double-sided sticky tape, my friend for this project, and I trim off the corners and fold it in. And it, it doesn't have to look perfect, you'll see why in a few minutes. Um, but I go around all the edges, again with the sticky tape, and then I cut the corners, actually. Let me show you what I do here. I actually take the corner here and cut it at a 45 degree angle. So when it folds, it, it folds into like a perfect little uh, fr picture frame. And now I have my journal ready to insert um, the pages. Okay, so now we have the outside done and we need to attach our pages and at the same time we're going to cover up the brown area that's exposed still. And to do this, remember this book has a shiny edges and what we're going to do is we're going to take that shiny edge on each side and attach it down so it covers up the brown area and um, creates a really nice seamless look. So to get started again, I pull out my double-sided sticky tape. Can you imagine um, if I had to wait for all the glue to dry um, doing glue? So I definitely recommend the double-sided sticky tape for this project or um, at least a glue stick, um, as long as the glue stick is a really strong 
uh, glue to it because you don't want it to fall apart on you. So I'm just going to go through and tape the edges just like I've done everything else. Now I'm going to remove the backing. Bring over my um, cover and then I'm just going to line up the um, spine in my spine there and then I'm going to fold down my page so that it lays correctly and then take my fingers and run them along the edge to make sure I make that adhesion there I'm going to repeat the same thing for the other side And when we're ready to close it and stick it to the other side, you just want to make sure that you close the book so that you don't make it too tight where it won't open and close. Um, so now I have my journal and I'm almost done. I'm just going to add a few finishing touches. And to finish it off, I want to add a little ribbon to close it. So I'm just taking my hole punch. In this case, this is my heart shape hole punch which is fitting because I love this journal and how it turned out. And I just punch a hole in the front side. I have to apply some good pressure because it's pretty thick. And then I do the same, line it up and do the same thing to the back side. Then I cut about um, 18 inches of ribbon and I'm looping it through. to one side and then I take the other piece of ribbon and do the exact same thing on the other side and then we can tie the two together and that's how I can close my journal when I'm done also with the length of the string I can make it expand too so if I do anything that's two or three dimensional in the book um, I have room to tie it up and there's my finished piece. I hope you've enjoyed this instructional presentation. Uh, totally thinking outside the box on this one, but I think I am pleased with how it turned out. I can't wait to see your journals and what you create. Okay, thanks for watching. So I put this on a piece of white paper towel so you can get a real good look at what the end result was. So let's just look through. So when I open it up, you can see that I have all my pages are the back side of Kirkland photo paper and it looks nice and finished and I'm ready to start creating. How about you? I hope that you will join us. We're going to be launching an alcohol ink journaling challenge in the next couple of weeks and um, also look out for our new alcohol ink art journal that's going to be available to purchase real soon as well. I hope you are inspired and ready to start journaling with me. As always, happy inking. Come learn, create, and share with us. It's a life-changing opportunity. Excite the artist within.